This was the front page of the Washington Post on November 22nd, 1992. So less than three weeks after the big presidential election that year. Packwood accused of sexual advances. Alleged behavior pattern counters image. Four-term Republican Senator Bob Packwood of Oregon had just been re-elected three weeks before. But then there was this bombshell scoop on the front page of the Washington Post spelling out 10 alleged incidents dating back to his first year as a United States senator. Quote, in some cases, the women said the behavior took place when he'd been drinking. Several said he was abrupt, grabbing them without warning, kissing them forcefully, and persisting until they made clear they were not interested or had pushed him away. Eventually, 19 women in total came forward to accuse Senator Bob Packwood of sexual misconduct. The Senate Ethics Committee opened an investigation into him. They investigated Bob Packwood for 33 months, during, during which time the Republicans regained control of the Senate from Democrats. Even with Republicans in charge, the committee refused Senator Packwood's repeated requests that he should be allowed to participate in public hearings on the matter. They said no to that. They proceeded on their own terms. And after that 33-month investigation, the Senate Ethics Committee released a report, a 10-volume damning report on Senator Bob Packwood. It was over 10,000 pages long. It weighed 40 pounds. For a while, it made for some non-G-rated reporting on the nightly news. The committee released more than 10,000 documents, including embarrassing excerpts from Packwood's diary. In them, the senator claims to have had sexual encounters with 22 members of his staff, some in his office, some described in explicit detail. He wrote, she has the most stunning figure, big breasts. Needless to say, I did not stop myself. He also wrote that it was his Christian duty to make love to one staffer. Even more potentially troublesome, the committee laid out how diaries were altered by Packwood in what was deemed an illegal effort to cover up and obstruct the Senate investigation. The matter was referred to the Justice Department for possible criminal charges. Senator Bob Packwood had held out for 33 months. But after that 10,000 re 10, page report from the Senate Ethics Committee, uh, he quit. He quit that same day. Senator Bob Packwood was done. He resigned before he could get officially expelled from the U.S. Senate. He resigned in tears on the floor of the Senate. And the person who forced that, the chair of that Senate Ethics Committee, who went so far as recommending federal charges against his fellow Republican, who whipped the rest of his committee to vote for a unanimous expulsion vote against Bob Packwood, who rolled out that 40-pound indictment against his fellow Republican to make sure Senator Bob Packwood would resign. The chair who, of that ethics committee, who played such hardball on that issue, who made all of that happen, was a Republican senator from Kentucky named Mitch McConnell. The committee has heard enough. The Senate has heard enough. The public has heard enough. The evidence is compelling. And it seems to me the appropriate response would be resignation. Both senators specifically challenged Packwood's claim that he was at worst guilty of over-eagerly kissing women. He used physical coercion against his victims, frightening them and causing them severe emotional distress. Mitch McConnell, now the Senate Republican leader, he really did lead the charge against one of his own Republican colleagues in the early 90s, ultimately making sure that Senator Bob Packwood had no friends in the Senate and had no rational choice but to resign in tears. And as Republicans deal with a not quite exact but weirdly similar situation on their hands now, now a Republican candidate for Senate accused of sexual misconduct against teenagers, honestly there's no one better suited in the United States Senate to manage a crisis like this, to end a crisis like this, than Mitch McConnell. There's no one who has more apt experience for how you make a problem like this go away. I mean, calling for Roy Moore to drop out of the Senate race in Alabama is a thing. Calling for Alabama voters to reject him and vote for his opponent instead, that's a thing. But Roy Moore isn't just trying to win a random contest. He's trying to join something. He's trying to join the United States Senate. And that body has considerable say over whether or not Roy Moore gets to do that. And yes, they could wait until after the election to start working then on expelling Roy Moore once he gets to Washington. 
But the Senate could also begin holding hearings on Roy Moore right now and his fitness as a potential United States senator. They could start taking care of this today. And Mitch McConnell absolutely knows how to do that. It's not like this is a dilemma with no way out. They could start this now. The model is there. It's their own history. They invented this model. They have done it before. Great Steve Karnacki joins us next. Stay with us. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.